Kia ora, Year 12. This question is the one that I gave out in class for people not redoing AS on Thursday, and it's the complex numbers question from 2017, um, question 8, paper 32. It's a really good example of just the basics of the conjugate root theorem and also smart ways to um, show that something is a root when you've got quite a messy polynomial. So here the polynomial is of degree 4, so we've got z to the power of 4 plus a whole bunch of stuff. And we're told that u is negative 1 plus i. And we have to show all our working to show that u is a root of that equation. Now it's really important that you are thorough with how you show your working here. Um, this one doesn't say don't use a calculator, but often the complex numbers questions do. And um, so we're going to start off by just looking at what's p of z. So p of z is z to the power of 4 plus 3z squared plus 6z plus 10. So I strongly recommend that once we start having to do things like put this to the power of 4, that you do your working neatly and separately first, and then you put it back into this expression. Okay, so u to the power of 4 I'm going to work out, and then I'm also going to work out u squared. The u to the power of 4 is negative 1 plus i to the power of 4, which is an AS binomial expansion. So I'll do that using Pascal's triangle, row 4, or you could use the NCR um, coefficients, but this one is so fast if you use Pascal's triangle. So getting on with it, we're going to have 1 times negative 1 to the power of 4, plus 4 times negative 1 cubed times i to the power of 1, plus 6 times negative 1 squared times i squared, and so on. So we've got the last two terms work out to be this, and then lastly we've got i, just one lot of i to the power of 4. So carefully cleaning that up and remembering that i squared is negative 1, we get 1 minus 4i, and here we get plus 6, but it's i squared, so it's going to be minus 6, and here we get minus 4i cubed, and then i to the power of 4, which we should know is just plus 1. So I'm, I'm just doing this to make sure everyone's got the i cubed, so 1 minus 4i minus 6, and here we're going to have plus 4i plus 1. So that leaves me with um, 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And u squared is much faster to do. This gives me 1 minus 2i plus i squared which is simply negative 2i. So with those worked out to be that and that, it's much easier to substitute into here without making small but important errors. Remember we're trying to show that u is a root, so by the factor theorem we want to show that when we substitute it in we're going to get 0. So u to the power of 4 gives me negative 4, um, then I've got plus 3, z squared plus 6z plus 10. Right, negative 4 minus 6i minus 6 plus 6i plus 10. Right, show every line of working you are doing a show that question. So it's negative 10, um, fine to say that they go at that point, and we've shown that it equals 0, therefore u is a root by the factor theorem. All right, so since it's got real coefficients, so since p of z has real coefficients, the conjugate root theorem applies, and that means we know that u bar, or u star in Cambridge notation, is also a root, so negative 1 plus, hang on, negative 1 minus i is also a root. So that means going back to here, we know two of the roots, and we're going to now put those together to get one quadratic factor, and then we're going to go ahead and factorize. So a factor, a big factor, is this. And we've done this lots of times, but some of you are still not fluent enough in this skill. So 
look at what I'm doing. I'm putting in those just as if I had three and four factors. Then I can say that this is going to be a factor, right? So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to regroup this with um, as follows. So we get z plus 1 minus i and z plus 1 plus i. And this is kind of the magic of the conjugate root theorem doing its thing, right? Because when I expand that, I have an expression with just real coefficients. I get z plus 1 squared minus i squared, right? Because now I've rewritten it, and I've got a nice difference of two squares expression, just like we learned back in year 10 or sometime like that. Expanding that out gives me what I'm after. I've got z squared plus 2z plus 1 minus negative 1, so plus another 1. z squared plus 2z plus 2. So that's great, because now what I can do is I can take my polynomial and I can factorize it into two quadratic bits. So I'm going to have this, which is from u and, and the conjugate of u, and I'm going to have another bit. Right, so to make it match to z to the power of 4, it's got to be z squared here. To make it match up to 10, it's got to have a plus 5 here, and then it's got to have some kind of x, I mean z term in the middle. So matching, I can match on either of those terms. So let's match on the 6z. 6z is coming from not that one. That's not right. That's going to give me a z squared. We'll just magically undo that. So 2z times 5 gives me 10z. And then here, I've got plus 2kz. So 6 is equal to 10 plus 2k, and k must equal negative 2. Now for the very last step, we've, we've got this as a quadratic factor. So z squared minus 2z plus 5 has to equal 0 because it's a factor. And we get z minus 1 squared minus 1 plus 5 equals 0. z minus 1 squared is equal to negative 4. z minus 1 is equal to plus or minus negative 4, which is plus or minus 2i. So my final two roots here are z is equal to 1 plus or minus 2i. And we're asked to state the other three roots. So the roots are u, uh, let's just write them all out. We had negative 1 plus i, negative 1 minus i, and now 1 plus 2i, 1 minus 2i are the four roots. So I reckon that for 10 marks in an A-level paper, that's actually pretty straightforward. It's the kind of thing that you could easily see in level 3, and if you saw it in level 3 calc, it would just be a merit question, because it's pretty clear what you've got to do. You just have to have the fluency not to make any mistakes on the way through. The D&D books are really good for questions like this, so when you've got a hold of those, make sure you do all of these ones where you have to do... Um, this kind of pattern here, right? This is where you need to put some work in. And Old Delta is also great for that. Okay, thanks for watching. I will try and wash out a few more of the A-level videos from last week later on tonight.